Shinto emerged from the life and culture of the Japanese people. It also originated from the natural landscape of Japan itself. Japan is a country of four major islands and many smaller islands, all situated east of China and Korea in the Pacific Ocean. So many religious traditions are found there that Japan has been called a living museum of religions. Buddhism, which originated in India about 500 BCE, took a thousand years to travel through China and Korea before it was passed into Japan sometime around 500 CE. Over the centuries, the Chinese traditions of Confucianism and Taoism also were transmitted to Japan, though they were accepted in Japan more as philosophical and ethical ideas. Many aspects of Chinese culture also came to Japan, along with these religious and philosophical influences. In addition to these imported traditions, however, one religious tradition emerged from the culture and experience of the Japanese people. This distinctively Japanese tradition is Shinto, and it began in prehistoric times. In fact, it was the importation of Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism that prompted the Japanese to name their own tradition. Buddhism was known as the Way of the Buddha, so Japan's tradition of worshipping the deities called Kami came to be known as the Way of the Kami. In the Japanese language, Another way of pronouncing way of the kami is Shinto. On a number of key points, Shinto differs from the other Japanese religious traditions. Buddhism, Confucianism and Taoism are all founded traditions, each established by historical or legendary figures who set forth basic teachings or religious messages. By contrast, Shinto has no founder and it features no explicit set of teachings or doctrines. Buddhism, Confucianism and Taoism all have cosmic or universal claims in their messages, meaning that they intend to speak to all peoples. By contrast, Shinto sees itself specifically as an extension of the culture and nation of Japan. So from the earliest times up through the Middle Ages, these four philosophical and religious traditions constituted the spiritual heritage of Japan. Some people, particularly priests and scholars, emphasized one tradition and excluded others. But most people, most of the time, tended to participate in several or all of them. Christianity first entered Japan when the Jesuit priest, Saint Francis Xavier, brought Roman Catholicism to Japanese shores in 1549. Like Japan's other imported traditions, Christianity had been founded by a particular spiritual leader and it made universal claims in its message. Yet in one important respect, Christianity presented a radically different alternative to the historical pattern of Japanese religiosity. It emphasized faith in the one true God and it called for exclusive affiliation to Christianity alone. In spite of great difficulties, including a language barrier, the Catholic Church was able to convert a significant number of Japanese before the government banned Christianity in the mid-1600s. Some of Japan's so-called hidden Christians secretly preserved Christianity in a kind of underground existence, handed down in families. But even this suppressed Christianity was reinterpreted in Japanese terms. Christianity did not formally re-enter Japan until the late 1800s, when the Japanese government lifted the ban on Christianity. Missionaries, both Catholic and Protestant, began mission work and opened churches. However, in the century or so since Christianity re-entered Japan, less than 1% of the Japanese population has joined Christian churches. Christianity also has not interacted freely with Japanese culture and religion, 
as other important traditions have done. For example, Confucian notions of loyalty and obedience to parents have become so thoroughly integrated into Japanese life that they are usually seen as Japanese rather than as something foreign. The same is true for the Buddhist practices of memorializing ancestors. Although Christianity has influenced Japan's ethical and social ideas, it still is perceived as a foreign religion. There's a tendency in the West to judge other religious traditions by what a people believe or what they don't believe. We frequently ask them, well, are you this or that? Are you a Christian? Are you a Buddhist? And in the Japanese case, people will frequently say, no, I'm not religious. I don't believe in this particular deity. I don't go to this particular shrine. It's really the wrong kind of question to ask. Um, it's more a matter of protocol, of social etiquette, of doing the right thing at the right time. The Japanese people also participate in many folk religious customs and practices that are handed down outside traditional religious categories. These customs are part of Japanese home life, occupations, and local traditions. There are half a dozen or so different folk traditions in Japan, and they add to the complexity of Japanese religiosity. But actually, the situation is even more complex. Religion in Japan is quite diverse just as Christianity in Europe or America includes many different religious orders and hundreds of Protestant denominations. In Japan, Buddhism is divided into major branches and many denominations. Shinto also is not a highly unified religion with its diversity of festivals, practices and local Shinto shrines. Buddhism expresses the way of the Buddha and his goal of enlightenment. Confucianism articulates the way of Confucius and his ideal of social harmony. Taoism can be regarded as the way of the legendary figure Lao Tzu and his aim of harmony with nature. And Christianity is the way of Jesus Christ and his plan for salvation. The best clue to the way of Shinto is the very word Shinto. Kami is the ancient Japanese notion of what is worshipped, and it can refer to one or many objects of worship. The term kami, somewhat like the English word dear, can be singular or plural, and is much broader and more flexible than the English term god. The notion of a, of a monolithic om, omniscient deity that controls everything from a Shinto perspective is a little too restricting, I think, because there are so many different situations, political, social, religious, that have to be dealt with, and it's the context that is so important. So it's not surprising that there should be different deities for different kinds of contexts. And even today, uh, you may call upon one particular deity for a rite of purification, and another deity if you want to get into a good university, another deity if you're starting a business, or you're starting some new enterprise that deals with money, so it's all very context-specific and, very, again, very pragmatic. In general, the way of the kami means to live a pure life in harmony with kami. In ancient Japan, kami were so numerous that mythologies referred to them as the eight million kami. This doesn't mean that there were or are actually and precisely eight million objects of worship, rather it indicates that kami are beyond number, that they are myriad or countless. Kami are found throughout Japan, especially in natural forms such as mountains, waterfalls, trees and rocks. Kami can also refer to powerful human beings and even human ancestors. Because there is no exact equivalent for kami in English, usually it is not translated. The closest English term for kami is probably the sacred, in the sense that there is power and mystery within nature and the natural fertility that produces new life. Scholars usually introduce a religion by describing a founder, analyzing basic scriptures and interpreting key teachings. But in the case of Shinto, if we want to know about the way of the kami, it may be best to look at actual cases of worship of the kami. 
Shrines have long been important to Shinto, even since prehistoric times, though the earliest Japanese worship probably occurred not in shrines, but in nature. In modern times, Shinto shrines can be found throughout Japan in cities as well as the countryside. These shrines are quite different from one another. They may be huge and imposing, or they may be tiny wayside buildings. Some are ancient, others of recent construction. Every Japanese lives within walking distance of a Shinto shrine. Traditionally, the shrine closest to one's house is considered the tutelary or protective shrine for the family. The Japanese don't regularly worship at Shinto shrines in the way that Christians or Jews gather for congregational worship on a specific Sabbath day. The Japanese instead will visit a Shinto shrine on a specific occasion to offer a prayer to seek help or perhaps to attend an annual festival. A number of features distinguish and preserve the sacred character of a Shinto shrine and its grounds. At the formal entrance to the shrine is a sacred archway or gate called a Torii. The Torii marks the passage from the everyday world into the holy grounds. It symbolically protects the grounds from evil influence and it makes those who enter realize that special religious behavior is appropriate there. On other personal or family occasions, such as a birth or marriage, many Japanese will pray at a shrine for help or blessing, or to give thanks for previous benefits. But the Japanese visit a shrine most often during festivals, and the single most important Japanese festival is the celebration of the New Year. Eighty-six percent of the Japanese population turned out over the 1998 New Year's to pay a visit to a Shinto shrine, to probably buy something from that shrine, like, a, like an amulet or a, a talisman of some sort, which they will put at home to protect their home and to protect the people that live there. Maybe they'll put it in their car for transportation, transportation safety. Maybe they'll attach it to a bag that they carry every day to work or to school. So it's really a matter of practice. And over time, these practices have a kind of momentum to them that induces or encourages uh, belief. So I would say it's practice first. It's social.